is Peter Heinrich. I am a developer evangelist with Amazon, which is a slightly goofy title that means that my job is actually to make mobile app and game developers as successful as they can be. And that includes on our app store. Of course, Amazon has an app store that's uh, based on Android. It's available on all of our Kindle devices and, um, and other hardware that we make available. But we also try to be useful or helpful for developers across a broad range of other development focuses. So um, you know, that's why uh, I'm here today, because we've got a little bit of insight into what it takes to be successful on mobile and as an app developer and publisher ourselves. And I'm here to talk a little bit about how um, you, know, you can improve your performance based on some of these best practices. So, Generally, I'm going to try to be platform agnostic, but occasionally I may drop into a little bit of Amazon shill just because that's why we're here. Uh, today, I'm going to kick off the morning with a few of those ideas that we've kind of formulated from the aggregate performance of other apps on our store and give you an idea or a taste of the, the, uh, the most promising approaches or best practices that we've seen be effective. Maybe. There we go. OK. Before we get to them, though, uh, I just want to highlight a few of the things that you definitely do not want to do. <laughs> uh, these are things that will not help your App Store rank, contrary to popular belief. And again, I just want to repeat, do not do these things. Uh, I call them sneaky tips because, well, let's face it, they're, they're just not on the up and up. These are things that may have been shortcuts at one point that may have worked at one time, but they're pretty much guaranteed not to help you these days. In fact, they're pretty much guaranteed to get you blacklisted on any app store where you try them. So I want to call out the worst of the worst of these, just so that we're all clear, we have an idea of what we're up against, what we as app, an app store, Amazon and other app stores are up against, but also what lazy developers think of when they think of uh, simple techniques to improve their App Store rank. These are, again, things you should categorically avoid. I just want to drive that home. I have had people come up to me afterwards and say, huh, that's interesting. I never would have thought that you would suggest that we do that. It's like, no, do not do this. So I just want to put that out there up front. So for instance, sometimes a great app will have a great name. You think about Plague or Cut the Rope or Microsoft Office even. I mean, if your app is similar or maybe even exactly the same as a popular app, you may be tempted to take uh, a cue from its name and choose one that, while not precisely the same, conveys the same sense, right? One that, if you're not paying close attention, you might accidentally confuse with the more popular title, like Macro Soft Office, Soft Office or something like that. This works great with icons as well, or descriptions, because after all, if they're working for the other guy, they'll work for you too, right? And then maybe you heard about Kim Kardashian's mobile application. It made something like $40 million in a single quarter. Uh, well, it turns out that that may have something to do with the fact that Kim is kind of sort of famous. So there are other celebrities out there and I'm sure that if you think about it just for 30 seconds, you can think of a few celebrities that might really bring some cachet to your, your game title. And why not just you know, casually throw in their image or a quote that you make up, or even just mention the fact that they play your game, and you can totally cut them in on any you know, upside if it works out, right? And if nothing happens, what's the big deal? They didn't have to do anything, right? If you really want to jump to the top of the list, though, you should definitely make sure that your users have good things to say about your game. And this is often easier said than done, because a lot of users have this unreasonable expectation that you're going to provide them with value or fun or utility or something like that. They want you to be creative and original. And sometimes that's a little more work than you're willing to put in. So that's OK. You can just give your users a little extra 
in exchange for that good review or a five-star review. Um, and then, you know, one hand, one hand can wash the other. So this is where you can actually exercise some creativity, right? You can uh, make this work in a lot of different ways. That means discounts or perhaps you award virtual goods or prizes or you can even give away cash, although that kind of defeats the purpose if you're trying to, um, you know, generate positive cash flow without doing a lot of work. So it's kind of throwing money away on people who, you know, you probably wouldn't care about anyway. And often, if you don't have the resources to give away, whether it's uh, free stuff or cash or goodwill, then you can actually resort to fake reviewers, right? There's no reason that you actually have to have a real person post a review of your app or a five-star review. You can take a completely different approach. And besides, who says that each customer is entitled to a single vote? I mean, after all, with a little creative scripting, you can let the avid devotee, maybe that's you, uh, express the true depth of your appreciation for the game. And strong feelings actually require a strong statement. I mean, how better to convey your love for your game than with 12,450 five-star reviews all delivered from the single IP address over the course of 37 seconds? So I'm just kidding, of course, right? I think I made that clear up front. Hopefully my sarcasm came through. These are all submission practices that will get you banned from most app stores. Some are still so common, though, that app stores have evolved specialized automated rejection processes specifically tailored to reject apps who follow these practices. Some of them require manual intervention still. They may require uh, a complaint to be filed or something like that, some uh, feedback from a user, a manual review. but the end result is always the same. That app is suppressed. That developer account is, uh, the perpetrator is banned outright or at the very least suspended pending further investigation. So if the ultimate outcome is guaranteed to be bad for the sneaky developer, why would anyone risk doing these things? And it's all to overcome this discovery problem. So I just want to reiterate that you should always try to be a good actor, right? You don't want to be one of those guys who tries these things and is talked about later in front of a crowd of people. Um, and one of the reasons is simply because it makes it really hard to, uh, to actually report any kind of infringement of your own app later on. So, it puts you in really bad company, right? Nobody wants to listen to somebody uh, complain about how their app was ripped off or stolen if they themselves are using techniques that are not on the up and up. So, plus, I won't actually like you anymore. I will personally reach out to you and complain. So I mentioned that discovery problem, right? There's so much content out there, and app stores have evolved these techniques to avoid inundating their customers with this mountain of content. They curate, they provide automated lists that highlight apps based on genre or sales. They have recommendations. Amazon has a great recommendation engine, for instance, that looks at purchases that you've made in the past and compares it to other users and what they may have purchased in the aggregate. And, um, then they also, of course, every app store has some kind of showcase or bundle system that allows them to promote specific apps that they want to give extra attention to. Because let's face it, the same things that make it such a great time to be in this industry, we're talking about broad penetration of a few fairly standardized platforms, powerful and inexpensive or completely free tools, widespread familiarity with and acceptance of microtransactions, and of course, just the general rise in self-publishing, these features of the new mobile marketplace make it a wonderful time to be a game developer, uh, as long as you don't mind competing with all the other game developers being wonderful right alongside you. So your product listing page, which is what we're here to talk about today, is your opportunity to set your game apart. And when it comes down to it, 
your game's product listing page is really the single most important marketing asset that you have at your disposal. It'll drive more than 50% of all your sales, and that's why it's really critical to invest some time in making sure that you set it up right. Just because the game's done, that doesn't mean your work is over, right? Especially in this age of self-publishing, which basically means that you're really the ultimate mover and shaker uh, for your own app. Nobody else knows your customer the way you do. Nobody else has more to gain or to lose on your uh, game's performance. So how do you make sure that your product listing is as good as it can be? Well, a consistent theme for all the App Store pages that we see, uh, that work well, at least, is that they showcase the quality, right? Quality that is consistent throughout all the elements of that product page. And again, this is their opportunity to highlight the fact that the app is unique, it's distinctive, it's creative, and it adds value. That starts with the name. It may seem kind of silly or obvious, but even the name you choose is critical to your success. So be descriptive. Goat Simulator kind of says everything you need to know right there. Um, you want to avoid overly common words, so things like um, book list um, you know, or quotes, bad idea. You remember that your potential users may be coming to your app from search results, and so you don't want to be just one search result among hundreds. Uh, on the Amazon App Store, we've seen games and apps significantly improve their downloads with simple optimizations to their name. So for example, I mentioned quotes. Here's an example of a, qu of a quote app that tried a couple different options, right? So originally, it was called uh, Famous Quotes for You. Not a great response. Changing it slightly, giving it a little more uh, specificity, calling it Founding Fathers Quotes, actually improved the, uh, the downloads quite a bit. Um, and in fact, Chart Boost uh, has some great statistics. You can check it out at that URL. Uh, where they've actually quantified this improvement. Uh, they've seen the conversion rise as much as 22%. And so you know, a, a rose by any other name may smell as sweet, but if you pick the right name, then a lot more people will want a bouquet of your flowers than, than the next guys. Another critical aspect of your game, the icon. Quick, just in two seconds, which of these icons uh, came from a AAA development studio and which didn't? Actually, you have less than two seconds. <laughs> you have a lot less time than that. In fact, users will spend, on average, about two-tenths of a second looking at an icon before they decide that it represents a high-quality or a low-quality game. So it doesn't matter whether you are actually a big-budget studio or whether you're one person sitting in a garage, you're an independent developer, or maybe um, two people sitting in a garage. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But the icon that you choose becomes a proxy, at least in the user's mind, for the quality of your game. So you have to make sure that your icon actually communicates that polish, the professionalism that you want to project, the quality that it takes, uh, the quality of your game in the time that it takes the user to actually glance at it. Again, remember, you have two-tenths of a second to make that first impression. So you might be surprised, actually, um, who created some of these. Maybe one developer in a garage, like I, like I described, or maybe a multi-million dollar or even multi-million billion dollar firm. So one example up there is from a uh, very large financial services firm. You can probably guess which one it is, but the icon doesn't really convey the quality I don't think that they, that they want to try to convey. But let's take it as an, as an example, the, uh, the quote icons that, that are up there. So these actually refer to the exact same code, but obviously, one shows a bit rough, while the other one looks like an actual graphic artist may have pitched in on the design. I think you can guess which one that was. But these two icons convey substantially different levels of quality, right? So again, Chart Boost has some great stats on this. Depending on the store you're in, icon optimization leads to between 8 and 17% uh, increase in conversion. So, a lot of great apps are completely overlooked simply because their 
icon is not that great. And remember, again, a huge percentage of your app discovery uh, for your users comes through search and recommendations. So you have to consider how those assets are going to appear right next to those of your competitor. So for this example, this is actually a, an app from a friend of mine who um, was experimenting with, uh, with a voice service for Alexa and Echo. And he, again, he had significant improvement when he changed the icon, uh, in, actually in concert with the name, changing the two together um, had an important impact. So we can look at the, uh, the performance over time. You know, initially he started out, he actually released the app in two different versions, one with the original title, uh, quotes for you, and one uh, with a little more specificity, the founding father's quotes. And you know, it was not great performance, definitely um, on the board, but still less than about 100 users on average uh, per day. So then he tried changing the name and ran a, fa or sorry, he tried running a Facebook campaign where he promoted both equally, and we see that the name that was more specific actually performed much better, at least over the short term. So he was encouraged. He was a little discouraged by the fact that it dropped off again very quickly. Um, he tried a Twitter campaign, similar results. Actually, he didn't perform quite as well as Facebook, but uh, at least he saw the bump. And then he actually changed that icon. So. This had a significant impact right away. People began to download the app in much greater number. And over time, with a subsequent follow-on Facebook campaign, that version of the app and that icon, which conveyed this improved professionalism, more polish, actually continued to perform. So again, combining the right name and the right icon can have a significant impact on your downloads. Of course, those aren't the only assets that you're going to make available in, in an app store for your app. Screenshots, very important. And I cannot overemphasize how important it is to choose the right screenshots. You want to choose something that's attractive, obviously, to put your best foot forward. And if it's a game that you're trying to promote, and I'm assuming if you're a casual connect, then that's the case, show the actual gameplay. Don't just show the splash screen. Don't just show the interstitial artwork. Uh, you may be tempted to. You may have a lot invested in this amazing, um, this amazing art, but what users primarily are making their decision on when they choose to download is whether they think the game is going to be fun, right? So you need to go. Your goal needs to be to show them how your game is unique and different, why they should play your game over someone else's, especially if you have direct competitors. Similarly, show the action. You've all heard the phrase "show, don't tell." So. That means that even if your game is uh, a card collection game, perhaps, don't concentrate on the amazing menu system, uh, the amazing background images. You just make sure that there's actually action that people can, can see and understand what, why that would be fun. And then you can also annotate your screenshots if you feel that would be helpful or necessary. It certainly helps in some cases. A little explanation goes a long way. There's nothing wrong with making it as clear as possible. And again, Chart Boost has some more great statistics about this. Tweaking your screenshots to follow these basic guidelines can boost your conversion by up to 35%, which is quite a bit. Similarly, take the time to include a video. Um, I want to make sure that you understand, though, that the video should not just be a trailer, right? We don't play trailers. They can look great. They can get people excited. But as this quote illustrates, that's not enough to get somebody to download. Uh, you want to make sure that your beautiful cinematic video masterpiece also includes actual gameplay. And don't just capture um, you know, one level. Capture some highlights. right? Don't just play through the very beginning. Show the highlights that people should be expecting throughout the game. Show them the beginner levels, maybe, and then some higher levels as well. Show them with the power-ups and the blasts and all the, um, the cool stuff that makes your game really stand out. Chartboost has some stats about how just adding a single video to your App Store listing can increase your conversion by between 19 and 35%. This depends on the store, again. And uh, optimizing it, which means um, 
you know, I'll, I'll show you some examples of what, what it means to optimize it, but that an, can add an additional 22% lift. So if we look at, say, uh, this video, which is a good one, when it loads, it's trying. I have a bouncy ball. Oh, there we go. Okay. This is a good video as a starting point. So this is, this is pretty basic, no frills. He's showing gameplay, which is great. There's not a lot of explanation, um, but you get a sense of what it's like to play the game. No annotations, that's fine. And it's got a nice snappy soundtrack. It's like, oh, okay, so it's kind of cool. I could get into this. So let's look at one that's slightly more optimized. This one, this one shows more of the gameplay and also highlights some of the aspects of the game that make it stand out. There's annotations at the bottom. And one of the cool things about this game gesture draw directly on the screen, which is kind of unusual for this genre. So it's kind of cool. You have these, um, these gesture effects. And again, this video does a really good job of highlighting what makes this game unique among its competitors. It has you know, good music and annotation. So I would call this uh, more optimized than the first one. I'm having a really hard time finding my mouse, sorry. Okay, there we go. And then finally, get back to my, oh, fail. Okay, this one, I would say, has the, the highest production value. We're putting a new spin on mobile's most authentic NFL game. Run your own route and be the playmaker. OBJ, OMG. Gronk it up. Get in the game with live events and head-to-head -head challenges. Build your team. Stack it with NFL stars and legends. Rejoice, it's Madden season. So that's kind of what you would expect from a, a big budget um, studio, right? And they did a great job. They have voiceover, they have the annotations, and uh, of course they have great gameplay on display for everybody to see. And now, where's my mouse? Okay. So now I'm gonna show you a terrible video no, I'm not actually gonna do that because surprisingly, nobody would agree to allow me to hold up their video as an example of a terrible video. So I'm just gonna have to tell you what, uh, what would be in a bad video. Um, customers don't wanna see you know, what school you went to, they don't wanna see your resume, so don't include uh, that in your video. I've actually seen videos that start with the, the CV, bad idea. Um, they don't really care about you know, how you log into the game. So again, as I mentioned, don't show these screenshots or the interstitials that aren't related directly to the activity or the action. And they also um, don't wanna hear about how it took you so long to bring this to market and how you've been in development for two years and your Kickstarter finally got approved and you, you just uh, are now bringing it out and everybody should be super excited because it, it's two years in the making. That's a terrible way to promote your game because then you've set this expectation and everybody assumes that, oh, wow, this took two years. Bad idea. So some other suggestions. 
write your description like it's a dating profile. Think of it um, as you know, the, the hook that gets people excited, right? You, you start with a bang, the first line really sells it. Then highlight all the standout features because you can use those second, third, fourth paragraphs to hit all the high notes and explain uh, exactly what your advantages are over the competition. Use compelling subheads when you, when you set those paragraphs apart so that each section starts with some kind of written artistry, for lack of a better term, that gets the user to keep reading. And be sure to include the actual details because those creative titles will re the, reel the person in, but it's the details that actually convince the users to download. And again, Chartboost has some data about this and how punching up that description can add 11 to about 13, uh, sorry, 11 to 23 percent conversion lift, depending on the App Store. And then finally, leverage your catalog. Every time you release something, it gives you one more excuse to cross promote and build your personal brand. You may have users who actually follow your progress and download simply because of the work that you've released in the past. So you release Bubble Tumble. Now you come out with Bubble Tumble 2. Why not reach out to the users who have registered and say, hey, you loved my first game. I hope you did. Now download my second game. Here it is. So again, every time you release, it makes you more noticeable. It gives you more impact. And it gives you one more opportunity to communicate with your users in a way that they don't feel as intrusive. So what do we take away from this? I guess the easiest question would be, could Disney have done this? When they look at your icon, are they going to, is the user going to assume, oh, this is some yutz in a garage by himself. He doesn't know what he's doing. Why should I download this? Or are they going to be wowed? I guess another test would be um, the hangover test. Is your icon hangover proof? So somebody hands you this game at the next Casual Connect party. You've had a few celebratory drinks. You're super excited to be here. You play the game. In the morning, if you see that icon again, are you going to think, oh, yeah, I remember that game. It was awesome. Or are you going to, you know, is it all going to be a blur? Well, that's probably not a good icon. Reinforce the brand. There's no reason why you need to come up with a completely unique name for every release. Rovio obviously has done a great job of tying all of the Angry Birds franchise apps together. It's really easy to uh, tell at a glance which apps are related and how they're all connected. And again, make sure that your screenshots and videos show the action so that you can convince more players to actually download and play. And then finally, Think of your app description as your app's dating profile. Would you date your app based on solely on the description? If not, then maybe you need to spice it up a little bit. And then finally, I promised I wouldn't shill too hard for Amazon. I am going to shill a little bit now because we have a great app store. It's based on Android, and it's available on a lot of different devices, including all of the Fire tablets, the Fire TV. And we can help you engage and monetize uh, quite a bit, actually. So I hope you'll do some comparison shopping. You'll take a look at us. Uh, there's no reason why you can't release your app in more than one store, and we definitely can introduce your, your game to uh, a, a nice, large audience. So uh, please find us afterwards if you have any questions about what it takes to release on Amazon. It's very straightforward. In fact, if you're already releasing an Android app on Google Play, it's almost a trivial exercise for most developers to, uh, to release on our store as well. So I hope you, uh, this has been slightly helpful. Uh, again, I want to reemphasize that we have a developer survey. And every time you give us a little feedback on how we're doing and what we should improve on, it enters you one more time in the hardware drawing. So please take a moment to answer those three questions and uh, contribute to our future success. So thank you very much. <laughs>